Greetings and welcome back to room 303 AP English, the Roberts Lectures. We are in the poetry section and we turn now to Susan Griffin's Love Should Grow Up Like a Wild Iris in the Fields, um, her 1972 offering on page 763. Griffin, uh, born in 1943, an uh, important American feminist philosopher and ecologist as well as, of course, writer and poet. She was nominated for the Pulitzer Prize uh, for general nonfiction and she did win the, the Guggenheim uh, Fellowship for Creative Arts. One of the things that I love about this poem, and we're going to talk more about this here in a bit at 2B, are the repetitions and the mood of the verbs. So let's pay attention to that as we read this poem. Love should grow up like a wild iris in the fields, unexpected after a terrible storm, opening a purple mouth to the rain, with not a thought to the future, ignorant of the grass and the graveyard of leaves around forgetting its own beginning. Love should grow like a wild iris, but does not. Love more often is to be found in kitchens at the dinner hour, tired out and hungry, lingers over tables and houses where the walls record movements while the cook is probably angry and the ingredients of the meal are budgeted while a child cries feed me now and her mother not quite hysterical says over and over wait just a bit just a bit love should grow up in the fields like a wild iris but never does really startle anyone was to be expected was to be predicted is almost absurd goes on from day to day, not quite blindly, gets taken to the cleaners every fall, sings old songs over and over, and falls on the same piece of rug that never gets tacked down, gives up, wants to hide, is not brave, knows too much, is not like an iris growing wild, but more like staring into space in the street, not quite sure which door it was, annoyed about the sidewalk being slippery, trying all the doors, thinking if love wished the world to be well, it would be well. Love should grow up like a wild iris, but doesn't. It comes from the midst of everything else, sees like the iris of an eye when the light is right, feels in blindness, and when there is nothing else, is tender, blinks, and opens face up to the skies. Now, many of you will, will report what a number of AP students in 303 have said over the years. This is one of the most remarkable poems about love that we get to read all year in 303. Notice the poem will begin with an affirmation and then we'll move to a declaration of how it is not the affirmation that is in fact uh, purported. Notice love should grow up like a wild, notice the word wild, iris, in the fields. But instead, notice ignorance of the grass, of the graveyard of leaves. In other words, it, love should be spontaneous. Love should be wonderfully new in each instantiation, in each moment. But we're told by line 7, 8, it, it, yeah, it doesn't. This is not the way. Love more often is to be found in kitchens at the dinner hour. And we'll, we'll immediately think of any number of great feminist critiques of the ways in which domesticity damages the whole routine of love. We think of Sylvia Plath, we think of any number of other writers that come to mind immediately. Tired out, hungry, lingering over tables and houses where the walls record movements, that is to say the clock determines everything. The cook, that is to say, uh, uh, usually understood as the woman here, angry, the ingredients of the meal are budgeted, in other words, stale, right? Predictable, we might say, and the, cry, and the child cries, feed me, demanding, right? The mother, almost but not quite hysterical, will say, in a bit, in a bit. In other words, life gets in the way of, of the love. Love should grow up in the fields like a wild iris, line 15, but never does. Notice we begin to move more to a statement, a declaration that love never ends up being what one would wish it to be, right? Never really startling anyone, 
what is to be expected, what is to be predicted, is almost absurd. Goes on from day to day, not quite blamely. Gets taken to the cleaners every fall. How the, how you read that one? Some students have read that one. Is you know the seasonal understandings of love, the ideas that you know um, the the way our lives are lived out in these in these prescribed patterns. Sings old songs over and over. That is to say, always looking backwards with regret. Falls on the same. This is a compelling word picture for two B. Falls on the same piece of rug that never gets tacked down. It's like a scab that you know keeps getting peeled away. Um, uh, you know, when we think of Langston Hughes Harlem, um, or dreams deferred. Um, gives up, wants to hide, is not brave, knows too much, is not like an iris growing wild, but more like staring into space. Now, this staring into space is where we're going to come full circle with this notion of a different kind of iris, not the flower, but the eye itself, right? Not quite sure which door it was. Annoyed about the sidewalk being slippery, trying all the doors, thinking if love wished the world to be well, it would be well. In other words, anger, resentment can build up as well. Love should, finally line 30, grow up like a wild iris, but it doesn't. It comes from the midst of everything else, sees, like the iris of an eye, when the light is right, feels in blindness, and when there's nothing else, is tender, blinks, and opens face up to the skies. Well, at 2A, obviously one of the major messages here is that love can easily be ruined, wasted, regrettably, right? Uh, it, it can become mundane. It's tragic. At 2B, I pointed out the repetitions. It's quite compelling. Notice the mood of, of the verbs from should to not and the compelling symbolism of iris a flower versus iris the eye. At 3A, what, how, what are you going to relate to this? John Donne's valediction for bedding morning is the counter to this argument. Uh, Shakespeare's sonnet 116 comes to mind. Any, what, what is for you the poem that speaks to how love can so quickly go away? You'll remember in Hamlet that Claudius said to Laertes that love is like a fire which can burn for a while and then it will just go away, tragically. Finally, at 3B, why, why do you think love is so often capable of becoming this predictable thing? So that it starts out so exciting and it ends up so mundane. What is it about love that qualifies it this way? And then finally, <laughs> we'll, look, we'll end with a happy note here. What was a time in your life when love was wild? When love was free? When love was compelling and unpredictable and in all of that was quite a remarkable experience? Well, um, a compelling poem by Susan Griffin, which I hope will challenge you to read more of her stuff. Thank you.